Good evening, everybody. I'm here at uh, my humble abode here in uh, Happy Lawndale. Anyway, Good evening, everybody. Welcome uh, to here. One second, we've got some technical my difficulties going here here. in uh, Happy Lawndale. I think that's better now. All right. So anyway, uh, welcome to my live broadcast. Uh, today we're going to be talking about ice hockey goaltender gear. Now, as you know, or if you've been watching the uh, sports right now, ESPN, uh, NBC Sports, any of those channels, the NHL playoffs are underway, and we're pretty much in the first, wrapping up the first round of, uh, of the playoffs uh, between the Eastern and Western conferences. So, you know, in fitting fashion, find something that's very uh, fitting for this, for this uh, time of the year. So I'm going to go into some of the uh, major pieces of gear that are involved with being a hockey goalie and also just a little bit about ice sports in general. There will be some extra stuff that I'll be showing as well that uh, can show the difference between what a goalie normally wears versus someone who uh, just plays either as a forward or defenseman or even as a figure skater. And totally a di same on the ice but a different sport altogether. So the way that this is going to work is I'm going to be working from the bottom to the top and uh, I'll be showing you details of some of the uh, parts of the gear that is are specific to protecting the goalie, especially when you have things like this flying at you anywhere between 10 to 80, 90, sometimes 100 miles an hour, depending if you're facing a recreational player or an Olympian, which uh, I've had the privilege of having both face off with me, including former NHL players, and I'll tell you, when that puck hits you, you're glad you have that gear on. So uh, I'm going to start with uh, going from the bottom into the top. So the first thing that you need when you need to be on the ice is skates. Those skates are very important because otherwise you won't be able to move around with them. There are different kinds of skates out there depending on the kind of sport. Um, I'll actually show you a couple of the uh, skates that are available. Usually if you're going ice skating at the rink and you need to rent, you're probably going to end up picking up something like this. This here is a figure skate, and the big thing about figure skates is that they have practically no real protection. It's made out of most is pure leather for the more uh, professional level uh, of skates, and the blade is completely metal. This is not designed to play ice hockey with. You will hurt somebody. There's a toe pick at the end of this that is used if you're trying to pivot into the ice to make a turn and the blade is pretty flat. So this is what you would normally use if you are going out skating with your family and you're just renting. So that's figure skate. Second kind of skate out there is the hockey skate. This is the one that you normally see NHL players wear or regular hockey players. Big difference between the two. As you can see, you've got a complete metal blade here and on the ice skate, this is designed to be lighter. This part here is made out of plastic. This is your metal piece that gets that makes contact with the ice. And the boot is also different as well. There's a little bit more flexibility, especially uh, for being able to pitch forward. And also the blade is shorter than that of a figure skate. So that will allow for quicker starts and stops and also being able to dig in the ice uh, at short angles and being able to reaccelerate uh, once you stop. So this is made for agility. And this is made for more uh, deliberate precision uh, skating. So where does that leave us? Well, goalie skates are a whole different matter. Goalie skates, in this case, have, uh, and this is an older style skate, have the same kind as a, as a player hockey skate. Big thing is, is that there is more plastic protective cowling. They call this a cowling. Uh, the blade is also longer, uh, almost like a cross between that and like a figure skate. So it has a very long, flat blade. In addition, in comparison to your player skate, the ankle is shorter. So it's meant to keep to allow the goalie to have more ankle movement, especially if they're trying to move around and make very, very quick movements uh, to put the leg pad in place, which I'll be talking about later. So this is one style of goalie skate. The other style of goalie skate, which I currently use, is of a newer technology. And when you take a look at this, it actually looks more like a player skate when you see it. And uh, as you can see here, th there is no upper cowling. There's no extra plastic up here. But there is the plastic here that holds the metal blade. 
Uh, reason why they've moved on to this um, in newer technology is because pads have gotten so protective and they, they actually cover the, the feet so well that there's really no need for the additional plastic. Reducing material allows for the skate to be able to move at a deeper angle and dig into the ice and make those movements that need to be done to get around. So this is the kind of skate I currently wear. It is almost like a player goalie hybrid, but a very much new technology, which is pretty cool to have, especially if you're playing, you know, at least two to three times a week, which I do. So now that we're done with the skates, we want to move on to the uh, main part of what covers the legs, and that is the leg pads. So leg pads here. This is a full length leg pad. This takes a, goes from about the bottom of the foot all the way up to about right halfway to my waist. Um, the way a goalie pad is strapped, there are several straps. There is an inner strap and there is an outer strap. The inner straps are actually what keep the uh, pad to the leg. So when you put a pad on, that goes around the leg, this goes around the leg. And the outer leather straps actually just keep the, just keep the pad from moving any further just in case these straps get loose. Um, there are many different kinds of goalie pads depending on style of play. Uh, there's actually uh, some that, that only have the straps and don't have this inner channel here that allows for more stability. Some, some goalies like uh, a little bit of a floppier style of pad. I myself am one that likes the security of feeling that you know, my leg is really in the channel, I can feel it. And then in addition for additional protection, there is a thigh guard. Some of these goalie pads do not have thigh guards. This is one, it's a personal preference for the goalies. I like this because if I have, when, you know, when in situations where I drop to my knees, this actually seals up my knee and prevents a puck from actually striking the knee. Um, some goalies actually use knee pads similar to that of a volleyball player. And there are also specific goalie knee pads that are, that are made in such a way. But, um, in my case, this is a personal preference. I like to have just a wool block here. Now, goalie pads come in different sizes, uh, and this really is uh, based on, uh, in terms of uh, measurement, you would actually have to measure from the uh, top of the ankle bone all the way to the middle of your knee. They call that the at the knee measurement, and that's actually how you determine um, the uh, size of a goalie pad. When it comes to that, just because you're 6'5 doesn't necessarily mean you're going to wear a pad that is stereotypically meant for a person who's 6'5 or 5'11 or anything like that. It actually depends on the length of the distance between your ankle bone and the middle of your knee. So there are some taller goalies that kind of look a little goofy because they actually have a very short leg. It happens, but the whole point is if you're not comfortable and you're not, being, you're not able to move around, this is going to be a, a hindrance rather than a help. So in my case, my at the knee is about 17.5 inches, which um, if you do the math on a particular, on, on most brands, that's about a 33 inch pad. So when, uh, when they talk about the sizing of goalie pads, there's different sizes. There's a 33 and then there's a plus and a number. The plus part is actually the measurement above the thigh. They call that a thigh rise. And so in this case, I like a tall pad. So mine is a 30, it's actually a 32. A 32 plus an additional three inches up here so that when the pad goes down on the ice it covers the, the area between the legs which is often referred to as the five hole so if you're ever watching hockey and you hear the goalie got scored on in the five hole you're talking about the area right between the goalie's legs so this is the pads the leg pads they come in pairs like so and the way that uh, to properly put on a goalie pad this part here, which is called an outer roll, this needs to face outward. It can, it is not, you do not take the pads and put them in like this. Not only will you look goofy, it will be very uncomfortable and you could actually hurt yourself if you put them on the wrong way. So there's that. So as we move up, up the body, uh, the next thing we think about is undergarments. Now, most goalies will wear normal undergarments as a good pair of compression shorts and a nice moisture wicking shirt. But underneath it all, because pucks don't, uh, you know, sensitive areas don't like pucks, don't forget your jock. This is extremely important. This is a female version of a jock. The male version has a cup for the appropriate parts. So that this is definitely useful, especially when uh, pucks coming at the midsection or lower. Now, what covers that, though, is a pair of goalie pads. 
These pants are different than what a player wears in that there's a lot more padding on these pants. When uh, a puck misses the pads and goes up, it's going to, highly likely it's going to hit the pants. The big thing is, is the pants have a very wide covering area. It's actually very square in this model. There's also padding right between where the puck would tend to go in between. There's also additional padding up here to help with protecting what the pelvic protector or jock strap would normal would also be covering as well. So you get multiple coverage there. It is slightly oversized on purpose. It helps with mobility so that you don't you're not being you know, t uh, held tight by your pants. And also it gives a little bit of size. You don't want to go too big because um, that actually you lose protection if the pads are too big and the padding slides out of place. So this is the pants. So as we work our way up, uh, this is uh, protecting the entire bottom section of your body, basically the waist down and, uh, and, uh, and part of the kidneys and that area too. So that is the bottom. After that, we then go to the chest area. Um, the chest area is pretty much going to be from the waist up to the neck and also all of the arms, elbows, and everything else there. So this right here is a chest pr protector. Kind of looks like a uh, flak jacket if you ask me. And this particular style of uh, chest protector has several parts. There is the butterfly wings, which um, allow for additional, they're floating, it's floating, so that it allows for additional protection while still staying light and also moves when the goalie moves. Um, in addition to that, this particular model has a heart guard. This is actually very similar I've seen in um, a baseball catcher uh, chest, uh, chest protectors where it's just an additional hard piece where if a puck hits that, it helps reduce the shock going to the chest, which also reduces the possibility of uh, cardiac arrest if you get hit there in the chest hard enough. Uh, this chest protector also includes a neck neck piece right here, and that covers up the neck. Some goalies will also wear an additional uh, piece of clear plastic that hangs off of their goalie mask made out of Lexan. That also helps with the uh, the additional protection in the neck if, the, if a puck just happens to hit that very small area that's exposed. Uh, in the back, it is a full, it, it goes around the back full. There is protection here to help part of the spine area, and it is cut short enough so that the back of the pants overlaps with the uh, chest protector. So you have pretty much your whole back covered with the exception of the shoulder blade area. But if you're really getting hit up there, you're either really out of position or, um, or you may have been turned around or you may have fell on something. So this area, even though it's not covered, it's a very low percentage area to get hit. So it's not really too much of a concern. Uh, the arm section is made up of several things. Over this area here protects the entire elbow. So uh, it has a couple butterfly flaps like the ones on the shoulders, and that's just additional floating protection. So if a puck hits on the side, that gets covered. Also, if uh, you're, you fall and you end up landing on your elbow, this is made out of plastic, as you can hear, and that is uh, very protective as well. Uh, the only part of this side, of the underside that is exposed, is up here, which is the back of the arm, about here, which is, once again, a low percentage area that is very unlikely to get hit if you are positioned properly. So that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, in the front, the uh, extra protection actually comes in twofold. With the main part of the chest protector, there's a shoulder piece up here that also can be removed, but I keep it on for extra protection. And that actually overlaps the arm, at least for a very nice moving arm piece that, that has um, all the protection you need without really moving along with you. It just kind of sits there. There's also an additional piece of plastic sitting right here. So when the puck hits that, which is also a high percentage area, this is where a lot of people get hit uh, in the arms, uh, that will bounce off as well. Um, the arms are actually shorter. As you, you know, you're used to having like a full jacket or a jersey where the arm completely goes to here. The chest protector actually ends here because of the uh, blocker and glove that I'm about to demonstrate next. So uh, here we go. So goalies are, are split into two types. There's the regular goalie, which is the traditional goalie that you will always see. And then there's one called a full right. Full right or a southpaw, like in boxing. So a full right, a regular goalie is a goalie that wears the catching glove on the left hand and the blocker, which is the 
box part and where's that on the right okay this is a traditional goalie style if I were a full ride goalie it would be reversed where the glove would be over here and the blocker would be over here so that a full ride goalie would be catching with their right hand instead of their left so I'm going to go into this really quick here this is a catching glove um, if you guys uh, if anybody here has uh, ever played uh, baseball or softball you can probably see that the catching surface looks kind of like a catching glove uh, like a catcher's mitt however it is significantly bigger and has different uh, and has a different kind of shape to it in terms of protection uh, goalie glove is uh, much bigger in the pocket to allow for a puck when it ends up in here just eats it alive nothing goes anywhere it's just there in addition, because of catching surface and also to increase the look of a catching surface and also to increase protection, because as I had mentioned, the chest protector only goes up to here. This is the part that completes it. This is where the, the puck would hit. This is um, the wrist area. So a cool thing is, is that these, uh, these gloves are very easy to take and dry. The entire back comes off completely. So if I were to dry this after a game, I would just open this and then this entire area would just dry off. So, you have that. This is your catching glove. And uh, is that? So the blocker, which, wherever it went, hey, I gotta find you. Ah, oh, there you are. This blocker is uh, uh, pretty much a flat piece of uh, hard plastic. Uh, in this case, this one's slightly bent. This one allows for if a puck were to go high it would hit it at this angle and then drop down. So it's, it helps deaden the puck with this slight angle coming up. Um, the underside of the, of the blocker is very much like a regular glove. So it has individual fingers. This allows me to hold a stick, which I will show you shortly. And in addition, there are pieces, there, this area, when I close this into a fist, this entire part here is completely armored. There's no way that anything can get poked in there. That is hard foam and plastic. So if I do get an Aaron puck, which as you can see from many of the puck marks, this is a 12-year-old blocker that's about to get replaced. Um, it has seen a lot of shots, and my hand still lives, so I think it's done its job. Now, with a blocker, depending on you know which, if you're a full right and you're holding it here, or you're a regular and you're holding it here, the type of stick you use is going to differ. But when you do hold the stick, it is held with this particular glove. So that is how it's held. Um, look on the other side, you're just holding it right there where the paddle begins. That's where the hand just tucks up right there. So this is how a glove and blocker work with each other. That's that. So now that we've gotten to the blocker and the glove, okay, we forgot about the head. So um, last but was almost last but not least is a helmet. Now a goalie helmet. This one's a little bit on the fancier side because this is my custom-made uh, NHL painted helmet. But as you can see here, um, lots of catchers in baseball have actually gone to this design as well. Um, it has the ability to uh, be removed, to be put on, and taken off very easily. But at the same time, is designed so that if a puck were to hit, you know, every part is covering the face. Um, there is a lot more material down here for a hit in the chin, and then in the back plate too if there's any sort of uh, impact in the head. So it actually does allow for a quick you know, removal. And I'll just put that on for you, just for kicks, but that's how that goes on. Very, you know, easy to put on, easy to remove, but at the same time, you know, taking a puck anywhere. Um, the bars in the helmet also prevent a puck from coming in because they're not big enough for a puck to come in. I can actually push this all day long and it's not going to go in. So this is a, this is a, Helmet that's made for that. Uh, with that being, uh, that being said, after you've put on all the gear, and actually before you put your helmet on, one of the big things is a jersey. Jerseys for goalies are different from jerseys for players. The jersey that I'm currently wearing is a replica of my college jersey from uh, when I still played for USC. And this one here is made for a normal player. How do I know this? The sleeves are not very uh, wide. Sleeves have to be wide on a goalie. It's actually called a goalie cut for a reason, so that when you put it on your, che your chest protect over your chest protector, the arms will be able to go through. Chest protectors' arms are so wide that they actually require additional material in the sleeve. 
So in this particular jersey, which is one of my tournament jerseys, the sleeves on this one are extremely wide. They are very wide. This is meant to accommodate a really big chest protector or really big arms. And it is, it is floppy when you look at it this way, but believe me, when you put the jersey on over your chest protector, it really does fill out. And uh, it's also a little bit longer to allow for the extra material that pops out when you do slip this over your head. Because your chest protector does come out quite a bit of a ways. And if you are female and happen to have you know, lar large boobs, it will stick out even further, even though you do try to strap that down. You do your best. So uh, with that, uh, that concludes my overview of goalie equipment, uh, of ice hockey goalie equipment. Um, since this is a YouTube presentation, you know, I'd love to hear your uh, comments there on the screen. I won't be able to read them until after, the, uh, after this uh, recording is over, but definitely like to hear your comments. Um, and once again, I do appreciate you uh, stepping in live tonight to uh, watch all this. And uh, thank you for allowing me to share my hockey experience with you all. So thank you and good night.